What's good family? It's your boy Giddy back with another reaction. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing great. Today we are back with our mini documentary about composers and yeah. Um so every now and then we react to the history of certain composers and I do it mostly for myself because obviously with all these classical pieces that we react to and all these new composers or to me they are new composers that I'm hearing for the first time and yeah I just want to know where they came from how they became composers and just a little bit of backstory about them and I feel like it always helps with you know understanding certain classical pieces that they composed and yeah just knowing the mindset they were in and maybe also the lifestyle they lived and yeah so um to me i enjoy these mini documentaries of some of you guys enjoy it too but yeah hope you guys like it and this is the fourth one we are doing i think i think we did chopin we did uh mozart oh this might be the third one or the fourth one correct me if i'm wrong but yeah today we are doing sergey rachmaninoff and yeah hey we listened to the piano concerto number two and number three and i was immediately catch by sergey rachmaninoff so yeah looking forward to this video let's get right into it that was a long ass intro i'm sorry sergey vasilievich rachmaninoff was a russian composer virtuoso pianist and conductor of the late Romantic period. Some of his compositions are staples in the classical music repertoire. In Rachmaninoff's work, early influences of Tchaikovsky, Rimsky-Korsakov, Balakarev, Mussorgsky, and other Russian composers gave way to a personal style notable for its song-like melodicism, expressiveness, and rich orchestral colors. Rachmaninoff often featured the piano in his compositions, and he explored the expressive possibilities of the instrument through his own skills as a pianist. Rachmaninoff was born into a family of the Russian aristocracy in the Russian Empire. The family name can be traced back to the 1400s, Rachmaninoff's family had strong musical and military leanings. His paternal grandfather, Arkady Alexandrovich, was a musician who had taken lessons from Irish composer John Field. His father, Vasily Arkadyevich Rachmaninoff, was an army officer and amateur pianist who married Lubiev Petrovna Butikova, the daughter of a wealthy army general who gave her five estates as part of her dowry. Yeah. The couple had three sons and three daughters, Sergei being the fourth child. In the autumn of 1885, Rachmaninoff moved in with Zverev and stayed for almost four years, during which he befriended fellow pupil Alexander Skriabin. Mm. Rachmaninoff spent his summer break in 1890 at Ivanovka, their private country estate near Tambov, to which the composer would return many times. In 1893, Rachmaninoff spent a productive summer with friends at an estate in Kharkiv Oblast, where he composed several pieces. In September, he published six songs, a group of songs set to translations by Alexei Pleshiv of Ukrainian and German poems. Rachmaninoff returned to Moscow, where Tchaikovsky agreed to conduct the rock for an upcoming European tour. During his subsequent trip to Kiev to conduct performances of Aleko, he learned of Tchaikovsky's death from cholera. The news left Rachmaninoff stunned. Later that day, he started work on his Trio Elegiac No. 2 for piano, violin, and cello as a tribute, which he completed within a month. Wow. The music's aura of gloom reveals the depth and sincerity of Rachmaninoff's grief for his idol. Rachmaninoff entered a decline following Tchaikovsky's death he lacked the inspiration to compose, and the management of the Grand Theater had lost interest in showcasing Aleko and dropped it from the program. To earn more money, Rachmaninoff returned to giving piano lessons. 
and in late 1895 agreed to a three-month tour across Russia with a program shared by Italian violinist Teresina Tua. The tour was not enjoyable for the composer, and he quit before it ended, thus sacrificing his performance fees. Rachmaninoff fell into a depression that lasted for three years, during which he had writer's block and composed almost nothing. He described this time as like the man who'd suffered a stroke and for a long time lost the use of his head and hands. He made a living by giving piano lessons. A stroke of good fortune came from Save Mamontov, a Russian industrialist and founder of the Moscow Private Russian Opera Company, who offered Rachmaninoff the post of assistant conductor for the 1897-98 season. During his time conducting in Moscow, Rachmaninoff was engaged to Natalia Satina. However, the Russian Orthodox Church and Satina's parents opposed their announcement, thwarting their plans for marriage. Rachmaninoff's depression worsened in late 1899. In an attempt to revive his desire to compose, his aunt arranged for the writer Leo Tolstoy, whom Rachmaninoff greatly admired, to have the composer visit his home and receive words of encouragement. The visit was unsuccessful, doing nothing to help him compose with the fluency he had before. By 1900, Rachmaninoff had become so self-critical that despite numerous attempts, composing had become near impossible. Damn. His aunt then suggested professional help, having received successful treatment from a family friend, physician and amateur musician Nikolai Dahl, to which Rachmaninoff agreed without resistance. Between January and April 1900, Rachmaninoff underwent hypnotherapy and psychotherapy sessions with Dahl on a daily basis, specifically structured to improve his sleep patterns, mood, and appetite, and reignite his desire to compose. That summer, Rachmaninoff felt that new musical ideas began to stir and successfully resumed composition. Amid his professional career success, Rachmaninoff married Natalia Satina on May 12, 1902, after a three-year engagement. In 1904, in a career change, Rachmaninoff agreed to become the conductor at the Bolshoi Theater for two seasons. In the course of his second season as conductor, Rachmaninoff lost interest in his post. The social and political unrest surrounding the 1905 revolution was beginning to affect the performers and theater staff, who staged protests and demands for improved wages and conditions. Rachmaninoff remained largely uninterested in the politics surrounding him, and the revolutionary spirit had made working conditions increasingly difficult. In February 1906, after conducting 50 performances in the first season and 39 in the second, Rachmaninoff handed in his resignation. He then took his family on an extended tour around Italy with the hope of completing new works. But illness struck his wife and daughter, and they returned to Ivanovka. Increasingly unhappy with the political turmoil in Russia and in need of seclusion from his lively social life to be able to compose, Rachmaninoff, with his family, left Moscow for Dresden, Germany in November 1906. While in Dresden, Rachmaninoff agreed to perform and conduct in the United States as a part of the 1909 through 10 concert season with conductor Max Fielder and the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Upon his return home in February 1910, Rachmaninoff became vice president of the Imperial Russian Musical Society. In 1912, Rachmaninoff left the IRMS when he learned that a musician in an administrative post was dismissed for being Jewish. Soon after his resignation, an exhausted Rachmaninoff sought time for composition and took his family on holiday to Switzerland. They left after one month for Rome for a visit that became a particularly tranquil and influential period for the composer, who lived alone in a small apartment on the Piazza di Spagna while his family stayed at a boarding house. In January 1914, Rachmaninoff began a concert tour of England, which was enthusiastically received. On December 22, 1917, the Rachmaninoffs left St. Petersburg by train to the Finnish border. They arrived in Stockholm, Sweden on December 24. In January 1918, they relocated to Copenhagen, Denmark. On November 1, 1918, 
the family boarded the SS Bergensfjord in Oslo, Norway, bound for New York City, arriving 11 days later. Demanding tour schedules caused Rachmaninoff's composition output to slow significantly. Between his arrival to the U.S. in 1918 and his death, he completed just six compositions, barring some revisions to previous works and piano transcriptions for his concert repertoire. From 1929 to 1931, Rachmaninoff spent his summers in France at Clairefontaine in Mutelines, near Rimboulet, meeting with fellow Russian immigrants and his daughters. By 1930, his desire to compose had returned and sought a new location to write new pieces. He bought a plot of land in Switzerland near Hertenstein, Lucerne, and oversaw the construction of his new home. Rachmaninoff would spend the summer at Villa Sonar until 1939, mm. often with his daughters and grandchildren. In the comfort of his own villa, Rachmaninoff completed his Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini in 1934 and Symphony No. 3 in 1936. In December 1939, Rachmaninoff began an extensive recording period which lasted until February 1942 and included his piano concertos numbers 1 and 3 and Symphony No. 3 at the Philadelphia Academy of Music. In early 1942, Rachmaninoff was advised by his doctor to relocate to a warmer climate to improve his health. After completing his final studio recording sessions during this time in February, a move to Long Island fell through after the composer and his wife expressed a greater interest in California and initially settled in a leased home on Tower Road in Beverly Hills in May. Shortly after a performance in July 1942, Rachmaninoff was suffering from lumbago and fatigue. He informed his doctor that the upcoming 1942-43 concert season would be his last in order to dedicate his time to composition. The tour began on October 12, 1942, and the composer received many positive reviews from critics despite his deteriorating health. Rachmaninoff and his wife Natalia were among the 220 people who became naturalized American citizens at a ceremony held in New York City on February 1, oh, 1943. Later that month, he complained of persistent cough and back pain. A doctor diagnosed him with pleurisy and advised that a warmer climate would aid in his recovery. Rachmaninoff opted to continue with touring, but felt so ill during his travels to Florida that the remaining dates were canceled and he returned to California by train, where an ambulance took him to the hospital. It was then that Rachmaninoff was diagnosed with an aggressive form of melanoma. His wife took Rachmaninoff home, where he reunited with his daughter, Irina. Rachmaninoff's health rapidly declined in the last week of March 1943. He was turned off by food, had constant pain in his arms and sides, and found it increasingly difficult to breathe. On March 26, the composer lost consciousness, and he died two days later, four days before his 70th birthday. Very, very interesting video. Um, I think one thing that I was thinking about was how mental health back then wasn't really taken serious and nowadays or during our time it's so common especially among young people and yeah I also respect how Maninoff just didn't give up you know when he had writer's block or when he was going through his mental issues and he actually sought for help like you know he knew that there was something wrong and he didn't just give up he just yeah he allowed people to help him and he bounced back and yeah i really i really respect that because you can you can definitely see that he had so much passion for what he does and the fact that he didn't just say okay you know what this is not going well for me i'm gonna just put it away and just do something different he didn't do that he just kept going and his success you know came a little bit late but it was definitely worth it and this is something that we can definitely learn from you know when something is not going well for you if you have a passion and you've been working on it for years and years and it's just not going your way don't just give up just keep pushing sometimes it takes a while some people make it within five years some make it within two years some 
need 20 plus years to make it but at the end of the day if you really love that passion then it's gonna work out somehow but yeah very very interesting video i learned a lot and yeah Rachmaninoff as a composer you know have a lot of respect for him and yeah what he stood for and also what he created and yeah very interesting video hope you guys enjoyed it and yeah please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe it's been your boy giddy and we catch you on the next video bye